Hey guys, welcome to my lecture on elementary signals. In this tutorial, I will cover unit step and unit impulse functions. Elementary signals are kind of building blocks for signal processing. You can represent lots of signals in terms of elementary signals. I will use unit step and unit impulse functions quite often in this course. That's why I decided to dedicate one full lecture to them. Let's start with, with the unit step function. We usually present this function by u of t. u obviously stands for unit. As the name shows, this function is like a step. This signal is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 for t equal or greater than 0. Here is the function. This function is very useful as you can represent many signals in terms of unit step function. Here is the first example. This signal is given, which is 1 between 0 and 1, and we want to express it in terms of unit step. If you look at it carefully, you can easily see the function is basically u of t minus the shifted version of u of t by one unit. So, on the negative side, we get 0 minus 0, which is 0. Between 0 and 1, the top function is 1, and the bottom is 0. So, we get 1 minus 0, which is 1. For t greater than 1, both functions are 1, so we get 1 minus 1, which is 0. Again, the top signal is u of t and the bottom one is u of t minus 1, so this window can be expressed as u of t minus u of t minus 1, done. Next example, this signal is given between minus 1 and 0, the line equation is t plus 1, and between 0 and 1, the line equation is minus t plus 1. Again, we want to express this signal in terms of unit step. Basically, we have two parts, the negative side plus the positive side. First, you can present the negative side as a line which extends from minus infinity to plus infinity. But the thing is, our signal is 0 below minus 1 and above 0. That's why we need to get rid of these parts. To do so, we can multiply it by a window. Below minus 1, the window is 0. So 0 multiplied by the line, we get 0. Between minus 1 and 0, the window is 1. So we get 1 multiplied by the line, which gives us the line. Above 0, the window is 0. 0 multiplied by the line, again we get 0. So this function is basically this line, t plus 1, multiplied by this window. From the previous example, it's clear that the window is u of t plus 1 minus u of t. Now let's look at the positive side. It's basically the same story. It's a line multiplied by a window. Below 0, the window is 0. So the product is 0. Between 0 and 1, the window is 1. So 1 multiplied by the line, we get the line back. Above 1, the window is 0. So the product is again 0. So this function is basically minus t plus 1 multiplied by the window, which is exactly similar to the previous example u of t minus u of t minus 1. And don't forget the summation at the end. Done. Let me solve one more example. This signal is given. Between 0 and 1, the value is 1. Between 1 and 3, it's t minus 2 squared. Between 3 and 4, it's a line with this equation 4 minus t. Again, we want to express this signal in terms of unit step. Basically, we have three parts. The window, t minus 2 squared, and a line. First part is basically u of t minus u of t minus 1. The second part is t minus 2 squared multiplied by a window, which is u of t minus 1 minus u of t minus 3. Similar to the previous example, we use this window to make the signal limited to a specified range. Finally, the last part can be expressed as the line 4 minus t multiplied by a window, which is 1 from 3 to 4. Again, don't forget the summation. Okay, we are done with the unit step. Now let's talk about unit impulse function. As the name shows, this is an impulse. This signal is zero everywhere except at the origin, which is one. Here is the shape. This function has two interesting properties and I'm gonna talk about both of them in this tutorial. The first one is equivalence property. Based on this property, x of t multiplied by a delta function, which is shifted by t naught, is equal to the value of x function at t naught multiplied by the same delta function. Okay, we need to understand the meaning of this simple property. Let's assume x of t is like this, and this is delta function shifted by t naught. 
The delta function is zero everywhere except at t naught. So zero multiplied by x of t leads to zero everywhere except at one point, t equal to t naught. At this point, the unit impulse is one, and the value of other function is x at t naught. Therefore, the product is x at t naught. So the conclusion is this product is equal to the value of x at t naught multiplied by this delta function. Please note that it's absolutely wrong if we say the product is equal to x at t naught and we ignore this delta function. This is very, very wrong. If you just say x at t naught, it means the function has the, this constant value everywhere, which is not true. The only non-zero place is at t equal to t naught, and that's why the delta function must be present. Now let's look at the second property of unit impulse function. This property is called sifting property. As the name shows, you can use this property to sift out some parts of a signal. Here is a mathematical definition. The integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of xt multiplied by a delta function, which is shifted by t naught, is equal to x function at t naught. Let's understand this together. Here is our x of t, and here is a delta function, which is shifted by t naught. Again, the product is zero everywhere except at one point, t equal to t naught. At this point, the product is x at t naught multiplied by one. So we get x t naught. Now, what is the concept of integral? The integral basically means summation. So we have bunch of zeros added together plus x t naught plus other zeros. Therefore, the summation is equal to x at t naught. Okay, let me write down both properties again. I'm going to use them to solve some examples. The first property is equivalence property, and here is the sifting property. First example, sine t multiplied by a delta function which is shifted by pi divided by 6. I'm going to use equivalence property for the case that t naught is pi divided by 6. So here's what we get. Sine pi divided by 6 multiplied by a delta function. From trigonometry, we know this term is one half, so we get one half multiplied by the delta function. I want to emphasize again that the delta function must be present in the final answer, otherwise the function is one half everywhere, which is not true. Second example, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity cosine 2t multiplied by delta t minus 1. I'm going to use sifting property t naught in this case is 1, and the cosine function is our x of t. The final answer is x at t naught, so we get cosine 2 multiplied by 1. Done. Next example, integral from minus infinity to t delta tau d tau. Please note the upper bound in the sifting property is infinity, but here it ends at t. Also, the integral variable is tau, not t, but don't be scared, this is super easy. It doesn't really matter if the name is t or tau or whatever. You can call me Iman or Iman. My identity is the same. So the integral variable is just a name. Now let's plot the delta function. The function is zero everywhere except at the origin. The integral is from minus infinity to t. We don't know what t is, so let's consider two different scenarios. When t is less than zero, the integral is from minus infinity to somewhere here. Since t is less than zero in this scenario, we don't reach zero. In this interval, we have just bunch of zeros. Again, integral basically means summation. So the summation of lots of zeros is still zero. Now let's consider another scenario when t is equal to or greater than zero. The integral is from minus infinity to somewhere here. As t is greater than zero, we pass zero for sure. The function is zero everywhere except at the origin, which is one. So we, if we add them all together, we end up with one. Here is the answer. Let's plot this function. For t less than zero, it is zero, and for t greater than zero, it's one. It's clear that this is unit step function, so the final answer is unit step. Let's solve one more example. In this exercise, I'm going to use both properties. The integral is from minus infinity to t, 
tau is squared plus 1 multiplied by delta tau minus 2. Again, similar to the previous example, the upper bound for the integral is t and the integral variable is tau. Let's start with the equivalence property. This delta function is non-zero only at tau equal to 2. So all we need to do is to replace tau by 2 here. We get 2 squared plus 1 multiplied by delta function. This is equal to 5. As it's a constant number, we can bring it out of integral. Here is what we get. Now I'm going to use the sifting property. The integral here ends at t. Let's plot our delta function. The signal is non-zero only at tau equal to 2. The integral is from minus infinity to t. Again, let's define uh, scenarios. When t is less than 2, the signal is 0 everywhere. So the summation of lots of 0 is still 0. When t is equal or greater than 2, the signal is 0 everywhere except at one point. So the summation is 1. Let's plot this function. When t is less than 2, the signal is 0. When it's greater than 2, the signal is 1. So this function is basically a unit step which is shifted by 2. Done. Okay, that's the end of this session. In the next tutorial, I will talk about system properties. Thanks a lot for watching this video. You guys are awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next video.